Hey guys, Josh Buckner here, and in this video I'm going to talk about how I edit my indoor sports photography pictures. Now if you haven't seen my first video, you need to go check it out. I'll put a link in the description down below, but in that video we discuss what camera settings to use when shooting indoor sports. And one of the main things we got out of that video is that we can be up to two stops underexposed, and then when we edit the pictures in our software, we can add that exposure back in. And the main thing for doing that is that we're trying to minimize the amount of noise we introduce in the photo because if you've shot in any indoor gym, the lighting is absolutely horrible. I have yet to be in a high school or middle school gym that's had adequate lighting for shooting at low ISO. I've always had to crank it up to 1600 to 2000, some crazy number. It's always introducing all kinds of noise into the photo and uh, it, it, it is what it is, but there's a way around it. So let's jump into Lightroom and then uh, we'll see what we can do. Okay, so we're in Lightroom and the first thing we want to do is create a preset that automatically adds exposure to your photos during the import process. And I find that this speeds up your workflow. If you do it during the import as opposed to doing it after you've imported the photos, uh, and I'll show you why in a second. But first, let's go to, to any raw photo you have uh, in the develop module. And uh, we're going to reset all the settings so that back to the, uh, the basic settings. So go to settings, reset. And then come over here to the uh, the adjustment modules and for profile I either choose Adobe neutral or camera neutral choose close leave the white balance as shot exposure go ahead and key in 2.00 and see that automatically added in exposure to the uh, image which once you import it, it makes it easier to sort through your photos to decide which ones you want to edit, which ones you don't. Um, and then contrast, this is totally optional. You can leave it at zero. I like to crank mine all the way down to minus 100 so that I start with a flat image to edit from. And then all the other settings, I'm going to leave at their defaults. The only other thing that I'll check is for uh, lens corrections and I'll check the uh, remove chromatic aberration and then enable the uh, profile correction. And then that's it. And so come over here to the preset menu, click plus, create, and just, I let's call it camera plus 2.00 EXP for exposure. And on these check boxes, make sure that the only ones checked are the treatment and profile, exposure, contrast, the lens corrections, process version, and calibration, and then click create and that's a duplicate so we'll just replace it now go back to the library click import and I'm just gonna do this to show you an example so if we click on all these photos from a, a recent basketball game you'll notice that they're all very underexposed and so during the import process if you if you look for uh, on the menu settings on the right you'll see apply during import and then you'll see a drop down for develop settings. Go to user and then you can add that exposure in by choosing that preset that we created. And that's going to automatically add in the exposure during the import process. And so that's going to save you a bunch of time because once those photos are already in Lightroom, you can then go through and decide which photos you want to um, edit which ones you don't because you're, you're gonna have photos that are out of focus or you don't like the composition could be any number of reasons but this to me is just speeds up your process so let's click cancel and then uh, let's go to uh, this picture here and I'll show you how I how I got it from this uh, to this and so let's go to settings reset and this is kind of my workflow, so I always, fix, I always correct the, uh, the composition. So I'll, we'll level it and then adjust the crop. There's a lot of dead space over on the right and on the bottom. And then since this was already imported, I'm going to click on that exposure preset that we just created. And then I, I'll work my way down uh, the list. So the white balance, I'm not a fan of that. We were in fluorescent lighting, so we'll try that first. Uh, and that actually looks it looks pretty decent. Um, the exposure, <clears throat> I think we can bring it up just a tad more. Um, right about there looks good. And 
really since these two guys are the, the main characters of this image, I, I want to make sure that we can see the detail in their face. And so these windows in the background are very distracting. So let's see if we can do something about that. And I'm just going to grab the highlight slider and bring it all the way down. And because we sh we're shooting in raw, we're able to bring back some of the detail in the, in the windows. And then you'll notice the lights at the top of the ceiling, those are clipping. And then I'll show you how I correct for those here in a second. And then the contrast, if you left yours at zero, then uh, you can adjust it up or down as, as you see fit. But since mine is all the way to the uh, minus 100, I'm just going to slowly bring it up until the image starts to pop. And it's usually right in this range. So we'll leave it right there. That looks pretty decent. Um, the shadows, we'll bring those up just a little bit. Bring back some detail in the jersey and the shorts. The blacks, the, the blacks look pretty good. We're gonna leave, I'm gonna leave those there. And then the whites, I think look pretty decent. We can bump them up a little bit. And then we're gonna add in a little bit of saturation and that's when you'll that's when things start to pop and what I'm looking for here is the skin tones on his face and then on this kid's face um, I want the skin tones to look natural I don't want to, to add so much saturation that it doesn't look natural uh, so we'll bump up the vibrance and add in just a little bit of clarity and that looks pretty good so far uh, I like to use the, the tone curve as a, as a secondary step for adding contrast. And my first go-to is always to uh, click the medium contrast because it's just a nice subtle S-curve and it just gives it a little bit of pop. It makes the uh, image kind of jump out. And then I'll grab the highlight slider and just bring it down and you'll see that it we're not clipping those lights anymore. They're probably still blown out, but it's not, it's at least not clipped. And then we'll bump up this black just a little bit. And then this right here is a, is a decent image. This is one that um, we could throw on Facebook and the parents would go crazy. Um, and you could even go from here and then add any kind of stylized edits that you want to do to it. The, the next thing that we want to address is the uh, sharpening and noise reduction. And so we'll, we'll zoom in one to one and you can see um, we were shooting at ISO 60, 640, so this gym was pretty well lit, but we still have a lot of noise in the image. And so we'll adjust the noise, the color noise. I usually leave those at the, uh, whatever the default is for Adobe, because it does it pretty good for the uh, red, red, green, and blue adjustments. And if we bring it down to zero, you can see there's some color noise in there. So we'll just bump those back to the default. Uh, what we're really going to look at is the luminance noise reduction. And I'll just grab this slider and I slowly bring it up. And this is one of those you want to be careful with because if you go too crazy with the noise reduction, uh, these boys here, they'll start to look like plastic figures. Uh, or they'll look fake. And so we don't, we don't want to go crazy with it. And so I just slowly bring the slider up until we start to diminish some of that noise. And also you want to be careful as well because you'll start to lose detail. Uh, in their faces and so I think we can bump this up to right around there it looks pretty decent and then I'll kick up the contrast just a hair and then also we want to add in a little bit of sharpness and so my default sharpening settings the amount I typically go with 50 the radius 1.5 I leave the detail at 25 and then masking if you hold down the alt key and then grab that slider this allows you to only sharpen specific areas of the picture so we'll just bump that up just a little bit more looks pretty good let's zoom back out that looks pretty decent right there that's uh that's a pretty good starting point you could 
you could then add any kind of uh, personal editing styles that you want to add to it but just to get you a baseline I still might adjust the crop just a little bit but yeah if we go from the before to the after huge different huge difference much better looking photo but anyways I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you got something out of it if you did please leave a comment below hit that thumbs up button and uh, please be sure to subscribe um, plan on doing more tutorials like this um, but again love to hear from you leave a comment below and we'll catch you in the next video thanks for watching peace